Well, welcome back on our series on the fruit of the Spirit. Last week, we talked about love. It's extremely important because without love, we have nothing else. Nothing else matters. But the next thing that we're going to go into today really is a direct result of love. You see, all of these things are connected. Sometimes we look at this list and we think they're just hobbled together. But God put these things here for a reason. These fruits are listed in the order that they're listed for a reason. Love is primary. You must have love. You must have the desire to serve God with your life. And everything you do, you do for him. But out of love comes the next fruit of the Spirit. It's a result. It's joy. The fruit of joy. A lot of people want joy. I think most people do. We all want it, right? But we, we miss that it is a result of something. Because you love God, because you want to serve him with your life, you have a renewed purpose. You have a reason for living that goes far beyond the shallow trappings of this world. Some people live because they want comfort. Some people live because they want pleasure. Some people live because they want to please someone else or they want to please themselves or they want notoriety or fame or power or affluence or respect. On and on it goes. But if you wake up in the morning and you live your life because you love God, the natural result of that decision, of that fruit, is joy. You have to understand that joy is so pivotally important, not just for yourself, but because joy is the single greatest identifier that someone is saved. Because the joy of the Lord radiates so strongly in the hearts of men and women that the world takes notice. The world may not always take notice by some of the things you say. In fact, many times when you say something, they may be like, whatever. They may not take notice of the actions you make sometimes. Well, I go to church and I give, yeah, well, a lot of people go to church and they give money. But when you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, that's when people pay attention. That's when they notice. Because they know deep in their heart the own misery and bitterness of their soul that they've given their lives to the pursuit of wealth, the pursuit of fame, the pursuit of pleasure. But here is someone who possibly doesn't have any of those three things, and yet they're happy, yet they go through their life relatively joyful, and though they have burdens, they give them to the Lord, and they're not weighed down, they're not depressed, they're not bitter, they're not angry, they're not vengeful. Why? It's the fruit of joy. And it's only attainable by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. See, that's the ticket. Everyone wants joy, but no one wants to go to the source. You see, if you have this fruit growing in your heart, you will be a powerful testimony to everyone around you simply by your demeanor alone. David was known because he had an excellent countenance. He was a man who sang praises, wrote poetry, who gave his heart. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. Joy comes from that. And by the way, joy isn't just so you walk around with a grin on your face every day. The fruit of joy is a strength. It's a power. It says in the Old Testament that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength. Joy gives you the energy and the ability to grow the rest of these fruits in your heart and life. Love is the principal thing. But by that love, by that purpose, that decision, that everything you do, you do for him, out of that comes joy. Because you're not living your life for some vain trapping or for some you know, shallow priority. You're living your life as intended, as you were meant to live for God and God alone. Your purpose here is to serve and to give glory to him. And if you surrender to that purpose, if you give yourself to that, then the only natural result is joy because you have found your true calling because you're not distracted by the vain things of this world, which cause bitterness and destruction. You've given yourself to something that only brings joy, and that's a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to understand that to grow the fruit of the Spirit in your life, you cannot do it if you are a joyless Christian. When you see Christians that are just... All the time, there's no fruit growing in their life. Just like there always has to be some form of water, some form of life-supporting substance to grow fruit. So it is with a Christian has to have the joy of the Lord in their heart. 
but it's a wonderful thing because it doesn't just give you this wonderful strength, but it also is a testimony to everyone around you of what happens when you give your life to Jesus Christ. And by the way, it encourages people around you. Joy is contagious. And that fruit growing in your heart makes God happy and makes the people around you happy as well. And remember, joy is not happiness. Joy is rejoicing in the Lord despite your circumstances. You could be going through a terrible time, but yet you find things to be thankful for in the Lord. And I pray that that fruit will grow in my heart and your heart as well. I hope this was a blessing to you. Come back next time. We'll do the next one and we'll see you then. God bless. Bye-bye.